We're analyzing Diageo PLC stock ticker DEO to see if it's a buy now. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Diageo. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Diageo for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Diageo's stock performance. Diageo is owned by a few super investors, including Thomas Gaynor from Markel, the firm Tweedy Brown, and it's in Terry Smith's Fundsmith portfolio, who's been called the British Warren Buffett. Speaking of Warren Buffett, a very small stake in Diageo is owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, although given the size of the position, it's unlikely it was made by Buffett himself. Right now, Diageo trades for $166.82 per share. Year-to-date, their stock price is down 5%. This underperforms the S&P by 20%. In the last five years, Diageo is compounding at 3.5% annually. In the last 10 years, they're compounding at 3% annually. Going back before the global financial crisis, in the last 18 and a half years, Diageo is compounding at 6% annually. Right now, Diageo pays an above average 2.17% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield over this time is added to their returns in their stock price. Since their lows in March of 2009, Diageo is up around four times. Their stock price is shown in orange here, and the S&P 500 is shown in blue. In the last two decades, they've underperformed the market. Diageo is down $25 from their 52-week high. The company's up only $6 from their 52-week low. Diageo is a big business. They have a $92 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Diageo? The product of the merger between Grand Metropolitan and Guinness in 1997, Diageo is one of the world's leading producers of branded premium spirits, neck and neck with Maotai in terms of revenues. It also produces and markets beer and wine. Brands include Johnny Walker Blended Scotch, Smirnoff Vodka, Crown Royal Canadian Whiskey, Captain Morgan Rum, Casa Amigos Tequila, Tangeray Gin, Bailey's Irish Cream, and Guinness Stout. Diageo also owns 34% of premium champagne and cognac maker Moet Hennessy, a subsidiary of French luxury goods maker LVMH, Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, and Diageo owns a near 56% stake in India's United Spirits. Now with that understanding, let's get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want Diageo's average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of their business. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return what its underlying business returns. These business returns are captured by return on capital. Diageo earns above average returns in all five of these years. They hit a low just under 13% returns in 2020. Much of this had to do with restaurant and hospitality disruptions caused by lockdowns. Since then, their returns on capital have improved in each of the last three fiscal years. They earned 18% returns in their most recent fiscal year, which just ended in the summer of 2023. When these are averaged out, Diageo earns 15.8% average returns on capital in a given year over this time. That's a couple percentage points above our benchmark. This is a strong check to start things off on metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want to see five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. This metric's all or nothing. All three of these need to be up for it to be a check. In this time, Diageo's grown their revenues by 33%. Their net incomes have grown by 18%. However, the company's free cash flows are down. They've declined by 28%. There are two main causes for this. One, the company had a $700 million change in their accounts payable. And the companies also increased their CapEx by about $600 million compared to what they were at in their fiscal 2019. This means the companies had both lower operating cash flow and higher CapEx. This causes their free cash flows to be lower today than they were in 2019. This is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking at Diageo from the view of an individual shareholder. We want to see earnings per share growth in the last five years. We learned their net incomes or their earnings have grown by 18% over this time, even as their free cash flows are down. In this five-year period, Diageo's also bought back 6.5% of their shares outstanding. This adds to existing shareholders' ownership percentage without them having to spend a dime. It's almost like Diageo's making a partial acquisition of itself. Just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price they're paying. We can estimate that when we try to figure out a fair value for Diageo later in our analysis. 
so you'll want to watch till the end. With fewer shares outstanding and higher net incomes, Diageo's grown their earnings per share. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth. The company's share buybacks and their free cash flow declines are going to be working against each other here. Unfortunately, Diageo's declines in their free cash flows outpace their share buybacks. Their free cash flows per share are down in the last five years. This is an X on metric number four. To recap, through four metrics, we're split evenly. We have two checks and two Xs. How will Diageo fare in the back half of our analysis? In recessions, it's businesses with a lot of debt that can have the biggest losses. Metric number five, we want Diageo's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Right now, Diageo has around $20 billion in net debt. In these last five years, Diageo's generated around $15 billion of free cash flow. That's falling short of where their net debt position is, meaning this is an X on metric number five. This may or may not be a concern for Diageo. As an alcoholic beverage company, their consumer products are going to be pretty stable. So by the very nature of their business, they may be able to use higher debt loads especially to increase returns to shareholders. That bit of financing strategy is something you'd want to dig into the company's filings to understand in more depth. Before we move on to our valuation methods, it's time for our bonus. In our bonus, we want Diageo's dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. Right now, Diageo pays an above average 2.17% dividend yield. They've supported their dividends using their free cash flows in four of the last five years. 2020 was the only exception, although it was very, very close for the business. More recently, in 2023, Diageo's cutting it very close. Over this time, Diageo has grown their dividends per share, but their free cash flows per share are down. While Diageo's dividends are technically supported by their free cash flows, and this is technically a check on our bonus, due to their higher debt loads, this is something you'd want to watch carefully for the business. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Diageo's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Diageo. Right now, Diageo has a $114 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives a perspective of Diageo similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we learned Diageo produced about $15 billion of free cash flow. This means they produce about $3 billion in an average year. When their $3 billion of average free cash flow are divided by their $114 billion enterprise value, we get around a 2.6% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. The company produced just over $2 billion of free cash flow in their last fiscal year. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get around a 1.75% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of these are coming in at less than half of the yield of the 10-year treasury, meaning they're below the risk premium we're looking for as well. This is an X on metric number six for Diageo. Don't just throw the business out. We still need to estimate their fair value and talk about our final rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Diageo, which brings us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of Diageo's last three fiscal years of free cash flow, then using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for Diageo, They've been a somewhat predictable business in their past, which can potentially inform these assumptions. Assuming they grow these free cash flows at a rate just under 7% annually for the next 10 years, then in the following decade, assuming this growth rate's cut in half and they grow at just over 3% annually, we're adding in their tangible book value to give an estimate of their net worth. Keep in mind this may not be accurate for the business, as it could be misstated due to how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. Book value can also get distorted based on mergers and acquisitions. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, from today's valuation multiples, if these are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Diageo's fair value per share is only around $47. That's down a lot from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. Diageo's predictability may decrease or increase into the future. Their tangible book value may be misstated due to their share buybacks. This 15% discount rate is an estimate of total returns to shareholders based on Diageo's free cash flows. It would include both their average dividend yield and any gains in their stock over this time. It far outpaces how the companies performed in their last couple of decades. 
potentially part of the reason for this low relative fair value. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Diageo, but we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for their business. What are they? Looking at the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, Diageo's book value of equity may be understated by around 3 billion British pounds, owing to the undervaluing of maturing inventory, which is recognized on the balance sheet at cost. Number two, premium distilled spirits is an affordable luxury category that should benefit from long-term demand growth from aspirational and high-income consumers. Number three, across the United States, Diageo's distributors have more than 2,800 dedicated salespeople focused solely on the company's products. This sizable support base has contributed to an above-average operating margin in this highly profitable region. But it wouldn't be fair if we didn't cover the negatives of Diageo's business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, the spirits industry is slightly more cyclical than beer, particularly in the premium segment and above. Diageo's price positioning at the high end can hurt revenue when or if the global economy slows. Number two, moves by the Russian government to decrease foreign alcohol consumption and by the Chinese government to crack down on gifting to government officials are examples of the risk of regulatory intervention in the distilled spirits industry. Number three, Diageo's acquisition strategy holds an inherent risk of overpayment, and this may become more prevalent if craft establishes a foothold in the spirits category. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of Diageo's qualitative factors. Now it's time to talk about our rating. We learned in analyzing Diageo stock ticker DEO, this premium spirits company is rebounding quite strongly from where they were at in 2020. The business was affected a lot by lockdowns as there were simply fewer global travelers and less consumers going to restaurants. They've earned above average returns in all five years. While they've grown both their revenues and their net incomes, their free cash flows are down due to higher capex and changes to their accounts payable. Diageo's bought back some shares, but they look like they use a sizable amount of debt in their business. It's above the amount of free cash flow they brought in in the last five years. While they technically support a growing dividend, Diageo's free cash flows may be stretched as they also have this high debt load to consider. Again, this analysis isn't financial advice. Right now, Diageo's free cash flows don't look attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, again, there are reasons their book value may be understated. From today's valuation multiples, using these assumptions if you want a 15% rate of return, an estimate of Diageo's fair value is around $47 per share. Diageo was last trading at those levels in the depths of the global financial crisis in March of 2009. They've, they've had stable and steady returns, but they have not been market beating in the past two decades. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, Diageo looks like a moderate candidate for further research. They have a very old and established business, but it's unlikely that they offer blockbuster returns into their future. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos. Share your thoughts about Diageo and let me know what business to cover next in the comments below.